Hey folks, welcome back. Happy to have you back from your second intermission. Um, I hope you had an interesting experience in the lobby, whichever one you chose to do. Uh, so feel free as you're joining back in to share what kind of experiences you had in your, in your second intermission lobby. So, oh wait, I almost forgot. It's the future. <laughs> uh, so here we are for the future. Um, so, you know, two things we know to be true about art in Black Rock City. One is that uh, it takes a long time usually to build these works, sometimes a couple months, sometimes a year or even longer. And the other thing is that they are usually built in community. And so given what's going on in the world right now, how are we resolving those two issues? Um, one is that artists now have more time to actually build their work. So a lot of folks are excited about that. And two, people are finding a really novel and interesting ways to maintain their social distancing and still be creating their work safely. So I've got seven artists lined up to share with you tonight. I'm really excited about um, how they're still able to be building their work for the next iteration of Black Rock City. So we are going to kick this section off with um, my friend Ron Rodriguez, who's got a really fun project that I've never seen anything quite like it in Black Rock City. So take it away, Ron. Hi, everybody. My name is Ron Rodriguez, and I am the artist and creator of No Dogs Allowed. And before I go any further, I want to thank the Burning Man Art Department for this wonderful opportunity. And also to speak a little bit to, if we can all talk about art a little bit, it might give us a little bit of relief during these difficult times. So I want to talk a little bit about my inspiration. And there's a lot of rules. There's not very many rules at Burning Man, but one of them is a really great rule. And that is no dogs allowed. And it's really true. Your pet shouldn't be at, at Black Rock City. It's just not a safe environment for pets. So one of the things that's always bothered me is that we've never been able to interact with our pets at Black Rock City. So I am building for the first time ever at Black Rock City, no dogs allowed dog park. So we can all go to a dog park and interact with my dog sculptures in this wonderful environment of dogs and agility course and a dog house and even a rainbow bridge where you can pay tribute to a pet that you've lost in the past. And also there's gonna be a best in show competition, which is gonna be really exciting. There's gonna be a lot of technology embedded into the dogs as well. So I wanna take you a little bit into a couple of our into a couple of our slides of what we're doing here at, uh, let's see if we're in there. Great, is the slide up? Yep, you're great. Great, so here's our Great Dane dog sculpture in the alley behind our workshop in San Francisco's Mission District. And you will see this guy out on the playa as well in the dog park. And then our next slide here, this gives you a little bit idea of scale there's gonna be a lot of different sized dogs in the park in different coverings. Some of the dogs are gonna be glowing from within. But yes, at the beach here, you can see there's a Doberman, there's a German Shepherd, a Labrador. We're gonna have some mixed breeds, some mutts, and some rescue dogs as well. Here's an example of our front entrance. There's gonna be a three foot high wall going all the way around the park. It's about a 50 foot by 50 foot space. There's gonna be a glowing white uh, middle bar around the whole park so you can clearly see the park at night and there's going to be a double gate right at the entrance because we don't want the dogs running out on the playa. And then here's kind of a quick overview. You can see there's going to be lots of dogs. You can see the rainbow bridge at one end. Um, there's going to be some abstract trees. You're even going to be able to walk a dog around the park and be prepared that dog may be speaking back to you a bit. So here's our flying dog as well. He'll be there at Burning Man as well, enjoying a little uh, free flying. Also, our website will be up in a couple of days, but you can email us right now at dogs at nodogsallowed.dog if you wanna get involved with the dog park in some way. We do have one big call out to action, which is I really wanna reach out to the Burning Man costume community because I want to be able to costume a bunch of these dogs in playa gear. So what would your dog look like on the playa? So if you're a fashion designer for Burning Man and you want to create an outfit for dogs, reach out to me at dogs at no dogs allowed dot dog. And I'm going to select 10 artists and you're going to be able to outfit the dogs and we're going to put them in the dog park because I can't wait to see a dog with a utility belt or radically self-reliant with his own dog bowl. Anyway, it's kind of endless what we can come out with. 
So I'm hoping that we get a lot of interactivity that way, both with the artists and whatnot. We're also going to leave a couple of the dogs just blank in the park, because just like we do on the playa, we'll be gifting each other. I'd like to see what, what, the, what the community gifts to some of these dogs, because I could just imagine at the end of seven days what a couple of these dogs would look like. I can't wait to see what the, what, what the contributions may be. So in, in the end, I really want to be able to create a space where we can just go and sit in the park with a bunch of dogs. I mean, none of us have seen dogs on the playa ever. So this is an opportunity to be able to sit with mankind's best friend and uh, really just sort of reflect on, on how much the pets mean to us. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody out on the playa. Please reach out if you want to get involved. And thank you again so much for listening to my, my project today. Thanks. <laughs> That's awesome, Ron. That's the best email address ever. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Thanks for joining us today. And um, next up, I'm excited to introduce Jules and David Nelson Gall. Um, Jules is the lead artist on this project, and she's worked on many, many projects in Black Rock City over the years. But this is the first time that she is the lead artist, and it's a, a pretty ambitious project for her first one, which I'm really excited about. So uh, happy to have you here, Jules and David. Thanks, Katie. So we're going to share a video with you. And we made this video pre uh, shelter in place. So we want to make that clear ahead of time. I think the one thing that we all have learned during these couple months is that we don't really have a sense of the future. So we um, are not thinking about when and where right now this piece is going to be. We are considering the build and the progress as the artwork itself. And we're sharing it every day on Instagram and lots of people are able to help us. So please go to our website and you will um, see the various ways you can contribute. Hi, I'm Jules. And I'm Dave. And we're bringing Unbound, a library in the multiverse to Burning Man this year. So what is it like working on Unbound during quarantine? Well, it's very different. It's very quiet. I'm here during the week and Dave's here on the weekends and we miss our crew, <laughs> but we're still getting things done just at a very different pace. I've been making art for about 20 years. I do mostly two-dimensional work using repurposed materials like old books or microfilm or mm -hmm. magazines. And this was an opportunity to go really big. In the Burning Man world, I've worked on large-scale projects with David Best since 2014. I've done nine projects with David in Derry, Ireland, and in Parkland, Florida, and in Washington, DC. I've been building art since uh, 2015 on Playa. First worked with Michael Garlington on Totem Confessions. We did Catacomb of Veils together. Also with Michael, we did uh, the Spire in Norfolk, Virginia. Last year, we brought to the Poppers Ballroom the Stairway to Nothing to the Playa. So Unbound is a deconstructed library. There will not be bookshelves or books that you can take out. It is a building that measures almost 30 by 40 feet, and every inch of it will be covered by about three to 4,000 deconstructed books. So book covers, pages, bindings, marginalia that we find on the sides of the pages. I loved going in graduate school to the New York Public Library. And I decided to sort of model the design after this building and then covered in these books. Also emanating from the walls will be sound and we're asking people to give us MP3 files of them reading their own writings or reading from their favorite books or poems. Something that I really kind of love about this project, we're all made from the debris field of stars. Atoms are, are the consequence of, of star activity. Well, these materials are the debris field of human thought. And it's all of this history that's now being reconstituted in this beautiful structure that we're making. The books are, are truly discarded material. We're not taking them from bookstores. We're taking them from the deaccessioning from uh, local libraries and other things, where their next place would be just the pulp factory where it would just be turned into dust. 
and this gives them new life that they would have. Like with any work of art, I want people to interact at many different levels. I want them far away to see a classical building and be sort of curious, what is this classical library doing on Playa? And get closer and realize the walls are covered in pages and illustrations and notes. And then they walk up these stairs to three arches that are the front doors that represent the body, the mind, and the soul. And they pick which door to go through. When they get inside, they will be blown away by the colorful book covers that cover the entire interior. And at the same time, sound in many different languages from hundreds of people who've been to the playa or not will be emanating from the walls. There'll be furniture, there'll be curiosity cabinets with all sorts of ephemera from these materials, um, pieces that other artists are making will be contributed and, and put in there. There's so many ways to help. We have lots of volunteers working with us. People have been sending us books. People can also provide art and sound for the piece. Burning Man has given us so much. We really are looking forward to the Burning Man community joining us and bringing Unbound to the Playa. Thank you for your interest in our project Unbound. We can't wait to get it to the Playa and look forward to seeing you there. So there's. So we really, uh, we really miss all of our burner community. Uh, can't wait to uh, get a chance to see you all again and work with you all. Thank you. Yay, that was awesome. Thank you guys so much. Really fun project. Um, so next up, I'm excited to introduce to you David Oliver. Um, David, last year was his first year in Black Rock City and he knocked it out of the park with this project called Portal. And so he is now hooked and is coming back this year with the evolution of that project. Um, so David Oliver, I'd like to welcome you to um, share a little bit more about your project with everybody here. Hello, everyone. Hey, David. My name is David. Hi, hey, Katie. My name is David Oliver, and I'm building the Project Pedaled Portal, and it's an evolution of my project from last year, as Katie was saying, Portal. And what I've done is I've taken the center ring, um, it's its main element, it's a 12 foot in diameter steel ring lined with thousands of stained glass tiles. Um, and I'm going to add pedals, that uh, nine pedals that step back from the ring and increase in size and radiate out from the from the ring. Um, and they will also be lined with thousands more glass tiles. Uh, when um, you're standing 27 feet in front of the entrance, all the pedals appear to be the same size uh, due to a play on perspective. And um, in just a minute here, I'm going to show you a video with the progress that I've made. I've been working on this since basically the day I got home from the last Burning Man. And um, but before I do that, I wanted to let you guys know if you feel pulled towards this project at all, please go to YouTube and um, check out. It's a longer video, but it goes way into depth uh, about all the synchronicities and fun stuff I've been coming across. And you just search for Pedaled Portal. Uh, it's all capital letters and I, I think it's in quotations. But for now, we're going to watch uh, a short video and here it goes. Coming back because I like where I am at. I am 
underneath the floor And all of the sea things I'm upside down now Walking on ceilings I'm not coming back But I'm here if you need me See things and feel things But never stop thinking No, never stop thinking Thank you everyone for tuning in. And if you'd like to follow uh, the project, um, probably the best way is on the group page, Pedal Portal on Facebook, and then you can get all the Instagram link and all the other info there. Thanks a lot. Yay, <laughs> that was awesome, David. Such a cool thing to have Thank both you. your band's music playing over the, you know, the sculptural work that you're doing. Really awesome. Um, next up, I'm excited to share that we have with us Weld Queen all the way from Moscow. Um, like David, 2019 was Weld Queen's first year in Black Rock City, but she is no stranger to building um, creative, fantastical, interesting sculptural work. So she's joining us now live from Moscow with an interpreter. So um, Weld Queen, welcome. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh -huh. I'm an artist, Weld Queen, from Russian Moscow. This is uh, George, my translator. Uh, Hello, help everyone. Help us. <laughs> Hello. Um, so, is, is today, uh, and today, uh, I will talk uh, about my project. Uh, it is an airfield 2.0 tower, which started with an airfield for walking in the clouds, which we and my team built in 2019. It was the first Burning Man for us, and everyone could come and fly in the clouds on this wonderful airplane rocking chair. It was a wonderful experience, and we decided to continue this project and build an, a tower for controlling flights in the clouds. It's an airplane which sprouts from the ground to the sky. It is 11 meters tall. You can get on the wings and enjoy the universe of Burning Man. There will be two wonderful swings on the wings and in its fiery tail of this airplane, there will be a wonderful chill out zone and where you can rest. And you know, this quarantine and the postponing of Burning Man for 2021 is an opportunity for us to build this project in better quality, to involve more people to implement it. And we're going to build it by spring 2021, presented on Russian Burning Man events in the Russian Burners community in Moscow. After this, we'll send this to the United States and build it with the air on the fly. We build it on our workhouse, uh, which is my house where I live and work, and right now there's going to be a small excursion around. Hi, my name is Weld Queen, and today we have a short tour of my castle, Weld Queen's castle. Right now we are in the yard where we are met with a sculpture named Mother, made in 2019. The castle is designed in Soviet post-industrial style. On the first floor there are some workshops, on the second floor there are two bedrooms and an office. This is the tower of the castle with a roof and courtyard. Let's go inside. And welcome to Weld Queen Castle. It begins with the workspace. This is the main area where I create my sculptures. And here we have a metal workshop, this small room. And right now it provides temporary storage space for sculptures. Here we have a miniature warehouse where we keep different extremely important welding and other thing is this is the castle's kitchen. There is everything we need for comfortable living because the castle is my main house and I like comfort a lot. Here is the fridge, dishwashing machine, stove and even small chill-out zone. 
And there is also a cargo lift right here, which we used to bring the sculptures to the second floor. Here, there is a corridor going through it. We find ourselves in a very orthodox bathroom, which has kept its style from the times before I moved in. We have all the necessities here, washing machine, shower and of course cosmetic mirror, as there is no life without it. And now we go to the second floor. Here, between the first and the second floor, are the World Queen Guard Shields. Let's go up to the second floor. There is a self-portrait sculpture here. It takes after me. This is a performative object in the Trisha's medium. In it, I conducted a performance on one of the fears. It has all my performative fire-resistant tarp and split leather suits. Let's move into the office. Here I work with contracts, documents, other projects. In this place we meet guests and work with my assistant. There is the Madonna sculpture here, the first sculpture in the rocking chair series. And this is the private room, where the Weld Queen bedroom. Here there is everything you need to rest, a mirror, another desk, and of course an air conditioner. Let's go into the tower. This is a stairway into the tower and the marvelous icicle which grows from year to year. And this is quite comfortable stairway into the tower. This is the tower, a space for leisure and parties. Here it's the dance floor, DJ space, and here we have a big chill out zone. It's the place where kittens meet. This is my beloved roof of the castle, with gulls always flying above this factory ocean. Here is my small vegetable garden, which is beginning to sprout. A table for evening suppers and a wonderful garden swing, where I rest in the evenings. Welcome to Weld Queen World. Uh, what the and core, so uh, that uh, was uh, Welt Queen Castle. If you happen to be in Moscow, draw bow. And this is the view of the tower airplane at night in the playa. Thank you all for your attention. Let's see in the desert. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you should read the chat, Weld Queen. Everybody loves your outfit and your castle. <laughs> Yay, thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, and now next up, I'm excited to feature Antoine Lee. Antoine is a licensed architect in Chicago, which is my hometown, so shout out to Chicago. And he has over 22 years of experience in building um, large-scale projects. He's been involved with the Chicago Burning Man community and been to some regional events, but this will be his upcoming, his first time in Black Rock City. So we funded him with an honorarium for this coming year, and I'm excited for him to share more about what that project is like. So welcome, Antoine. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yes, um, my name is uh, Antoine Lee, as Katie said. Um, I am the lead artist and designer of the Solar Shrine Project. And I would like first to thank Burning Man Arts for this unique opportunity. The Solar Shrine is an Afrofuturistic art installation project inspired by the magical realism and cosmologies of ancient Egypt and Nubia or modern day Sudan. I would like to dedicate this project to our collective ancestors. So as Katie said, a little bit of background about myself. I'm a licensed architect and artist. I regularly work on large scale architectural projects and many of my projects in underserved communities. I have been affiliated with the Chicago area burners for a few years now. On this slide, you see photos of our projects my team and I have worked on. You see a couple photos of an effigy for a burner event as well as art cards for an annual fundraiser called Shadidara. So what is Afrofuturism? A lot of people don't know what that is, so I want to read these two sentences. Afrofuturism is a cultural and artistic aesthetic which explores the intersections between the arts, history, mythology, science fiction, and politics from a Black cultural lens. This movement is multidisciplinary and envisions futures from African and African diasporic experiences. 
I feel a deep connection to Afrofuturism. My father was a Pan-Africanist and instilled in myself a deep sense of history. I've been a student of ancient Egypt and Nubia for years. And the idea to build installation art started a few years ago when I wanted to construct pop-up pavilions in inner city neighborhoods in Chicago as places for meditation and transformation. We owe a great deal to our ancestors as it is through them that our notion of spirituality and transcendence came into being. On this slide, you see an image of a migration map which starts in East Africa and it goes on through to other land masses in the Eastern Hemisphere. You also see photos of caves where shamanistic practices emerged with red ochre cave art, elaborate burials, and ancestor worship. So in addition to the knowledge I had accumulated over many years, I wanted to key in on concepts for this project. Um, at the top is a photo of Napta Playa in the Nubian desert from around 7,000 years ago. It is believed to be the first observatory in the region and oriented towards astronomical events. Also on this slide are examples of early rock art that shows the first signs of ritualization of boats or barks combined with solar cosmology. Um, I further researched shrine and temple structures, religious symbolism and rituals and ancestor cults. So the art of building is in its very act a gesture of optimism. Building something is the behavior of looking towards the future or for myself, the Afro future. During the design phase, I wanted to explore the poetics of space from an African aesthetic. On this slide, you see sketches where I attempt to bridge ancient African concepts and myth with modern design. I wanted the design to engage attendees at Burning Man about concepts of African mysticism juxtaposed with contemporary architecture. I also wanted the architecture of the solar shrine to look cosmic and galactic. So the solar shrine is oriented towards the rising sun in the east. The architecture is oriented six degrees north of due east. In the morning, the sun will illuminate the disc on the gateway and also the disc on the solar bark in the shrine. The main structure serves as a shrine for Ra with the solar bark as the deity's physical manifestation on an altar. The ancient Egyptians and Nubians believed that Ra had metaphysical powers as the giver of life on earth and creator of the universe. The solar bark would carry Ra across the heavens during the day and through the underworld at night in preparation for Ra's rebirth in the east. They believed that the solar bark would transform their ancestors from being in the land of the living into other realms of the afterlife. The main structure is similar to a mastaba, which was a resurrection machine for the dead. Now this is my last slide. So the overall design is futuristic with clean lines, subtle angles and modern materials, but megalithic in appearance. The gateway of portal is monumental in the shape of obelisk and the slender pyramid simultaneously. There was a ritual of the four torches in the ancient Egyptian book of the dead. The torches were placed at the four corners of tombs during ceremonies. Similarly, the gateway has four flame poofers and the shrine has four continuously lit torches. So the solar shrine is a place of visiting the ancestral planes of existence. This will be a place of transformation, a sacred space, a refuge, a place for sharing art, healing, ideas. Not only is the architecture of the past, it is also of the present and the Afro future. And I just want to say that we have continued to work on the project. Most recently, the structural drawings and calculations were completed and a couple of those images are included on this, on this slide. Thank you. Wow, Antoine, that was incredible. <laughs> People in the chat are just going on and on about how excited they are about your project. Lots of, um, yeah, it's just, I can't, it just keeps coming and coming. So that's really awesome. Um, Thank you. You know, when we selected your project for an honorarium, I knew I liked it, but the more I learn about it and the more you're developing it, the more exciting it gets to me. So I'm, I'm really happy to have you on board for this. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so next up, we have Marco Cochran and Julia Whitelaw, who unfortunately can't be here together with us in person, but they filmed a really cool backstage view of their workshop and studio. So we're gonna go ahead and screen that little video that they shared with us. So let's go ahead and take Hello, a look. Hello everybody. I'm not in the studio right now. I'm on Deja's property. 
We're working on the next sculpture. Don't know what it is yet, but we're getting close. Now I'm gonna hand you off to Julia. She'll give you a tour of the shop in Petaluma with Gaia. Hi everyone, I'm Julia, and I'm here at Marco Cochran Sculpture Studio in Petaluma, California. And I'm gonna take you on a tour of the studio and Gaia. All right, as you can see, as we enter the studio parking lot, we get to spend our days with our evolution or revolution from 2015 which we really like. She really grounds us having her here. And also recently added, we have Truth is Beauty from the 18 foot version that was on the Smithsonian tour for the past few years and recently returned home to us. Now we enter the studio the way most of us come in through the side door, which brings us into the kitchen, the crew hangout area, where we have a place you can hang out, warm up your lunch, get some water, refrigerator, a place to sit. And then we come into the main body of the studio. So you can see that Gaia is here in the studio and she takes up most of the square footage. In fact, it's really hard to get all of her on the camera. So at the end of this little tour, I'm gonna be taking us upstairs so we can get a, a full view from above and then you'll be able to see the whole sculpture. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Gaia as I walk around the sculpture and I apologize if you get a little dizzy but we're going to do a 360 spin around the sculpture while I tell you more about her. So Gaia, for those of you who are familiar with Marco's work, is going to be the fourth sculpture that he's done for Burning Man. The first three are of Deja Solis, and that was Bliss Dance, Truth is Beauty, and Our Evolution. Gaia is the first sculpture that is a collaboration, more of a true collaboration between Marco and myself, because Gaia is me, and Gaia is my answer to the question we asked with the Bliss Project, is what would the world be like if women were safe? And my answer is that I would put more nurturing energy into the world. And this specific pose was inspired by my vision of uh, times when I had my three children, they were young and they were on the beach and I would lie there creating a safe space, home base for them as they played running, skipping, jumping, burying each other in the sand, hanging out, and just having a really good time. And we hope that uh, Gaia will provide that same kind of space on the playa when we bring her in 2021, um, sort of a place for people to gather and reconnect with friends, a meeting spot, a place to sort of a, a nurturing space in the middle of the desert. There's gonna be a fire pit between her elbow and her knee so that there will be some warmth at night. I'm gonna take us upstairs now. Upstairs so you can get a sort of a wider view or bigger view of the studio and what's happening in here. And we'll go walk around through the loft where you can see various sculpture maquettes and clay models and then some plaster casts and some bronzes and here we are now at a really pretty good view of the front of Gaia and I think that's all the time we have so Marco back to you okay back at Deja's property you've seen the studio and our project um, it's about gathering and community and uh, the timing is perfect. We've had three or four months of not gathering. When we get back together, we'll have something to play with and be around. We'll see you out there. Bye. Wow, such a cool thing to get to see backstage. Um, fun. 
So now last up, I am excited to share with you that we have Renzo Verbeck and Sylvia Liss who will be sharing with us about Empyrean. Renzo is an architect and contractor and artist based in Colorado. Uh, Sylvia has been on lots of build crews in Black Rock City before, part of Flaming Lotus Girls, Temples, um, brought art to regionals, and has volunteered at the Artery even recently. So um, please join me in welcoming Renzo and Sylvia. Hi there. Hi. Hi. I'm Sylvia, I'm co-lead, um, artist and designer of Imperian. And this is Renzo. And hi there. I'm attempting to share my sc the screen. I let's see where to go. We can see it, but if you want to go into presenter view, that'd be good. I, yep, working well, on that. Okay. Oh, um, beautiful. Thank you, Katie. Yeah. Um, so this is a really wonderful opportunity, and I'm uh, really excited about this. And this is. Um, I know this is one of the greatest toys of Black Rock City, a gift, and you have, you at Black Rock, the people at the Burning Man have given us this gift to build, and we intend to give it back to the community as much as possible. And in doing that, we want, we have created essentially the first, um, perhaps the first crowdsourced, um, temple, perhaps ever. Um, and Empyrean is, uh, is initially, thank you, is, um, it's, um, it's about experience and energy and uh, the community of makers who build um, all the temples. And uh, when I was out on um, the playa last year building the Temple of Direction um, for a, a few weeks, I was just amazed and struck by the community out there and how excited everybody was about building and I wanted to create something that um, invited as many people as possible um, onto that build. So um, this temple is about um, the makers of all uh, of all the it's about all the people who make things on Black and Black Rock City. Um, the um, the temple is comprised of eight canopies, uh, large star shapes, uh, blade shapes, and it's um, about 206 feet across and about 70 feet tall. And surrounding it is a, um, is a perimeter um, fence. And the canopies are comprised of, um, this is one canopy, one of the star blades that uh, makes up Empyrean. And this canopy is about 40 feet tall and about 100 feet long. And it's comprised of uh, a large pattern of geometric shapes, um, tessellating um, octagon shapes. And <clears throat> this inset shows um, kind of a detail of that. And each one of these um, uh, shapes is going to be created by um, a series of panels that is built by um, as many makers as we can find basically around the country to, <laughs> to make them. Um, and I'll show you a quick video of how that those panels are going to work. But so what we've done is like, we've um, developed an, um, a bunch of blueprints that we will distribute to people so they can participate in making all these panels that are going to dress the, the canopies. And um, this is a quick video. The color just illustrates the layers of the woods. But this is a quick video to illustrate how those panel, panels are going to go together on the side of um, Empyrean. This is about a, a 40 by 40 square foot area. Um, got it. And um, another thing that we're doing collectively is we're um, making a bunch of flags that will fly over in Pyrian and and people can write in, uh, messages on those. We also have um, an opportunity for lots of different makers to make the pillars that are going to ring the Empyrean temple. And 
I have to hand it over to Sylvia at this time. So go ahead. If you want to participate and help build Imperian Temple in 2021, you can send us an email at the email listed here and we'll organize. Just tell us what part of the project you want to be a part of. And uh, as we develop our, our system a little further, we can get you some more information. Um, the second part of our presentation is what we're doing right now in response to COVID. And as a, a global community, we're witnessing and experiencing a deep sense of vulnerability in ourselves and each other. And at this moment of unrest, loss, and intense discomfort, discomfort your temple team is dedicated to doing our part to bring our Burning Man and global community an inclusive, safe, and healing space to share, express, grieve, and release. And we hold up the temple flame to light the way toward integration and healing of these global transformative experiences. Um, we've embraced the turn toward a virtual Black Rock City, and we have taken a curious spirit to explore how we can bring you a temple space in that medium. And we'd like to present the Empyrean, Ethereal Empyrean project, which will give you a chance to experience a full-scale Empyrean. Here's the flags rendered in virtual reality. You'll be able to take a portal inside the temple to this, which is a center camp inspired gallery, which you can walk through and learn the story about our temple, how we started, how we got interrupted, and um, what we're doing now to bring the temple out to the community. Um, let's see what's next. Our temple will have offerings. We're going to have a website open August 1st that you can come and upload images, video, audio recordings, and leave written messages that will be placed in the temple. You can choose where you want to place it. You can share that location with your friends if you have a group who wants to have the same offering. Uh, the temple guardians have lovingly told us that they will take care of the temple for the entire event. I'm so emotional about this. <laughs> um, we do need some more people on our team. We need a sound designer, an offerings developer, and an offerings designer. As you can see, here's some of the work that's been done by our creative team this, thus far. You can see that Ishtar pattern here in virtual reality. Here's our temple with a bit of a sunrise shadow to give you an idea of what's to come. And um, the temple will be open during the traditional burn week. And we plan to open at sunrise. So you can come and enjoy our experience. It will be accessible to everyone through a mobile phone, laptops, tablets, um, as well as high-end, low-end VR headsets. And um, we're going to get all this information on our website, which is imperiantemple2020.com. And uh, we will burn the temple as scheduled Sunday, September 6, 2020, with your offering. So that's all we have to share for the temple. <laughs> Thank you so much for this opportunity. And we're really looking forward to bringing you a, a healing space for 2020. Oh, thank you so much, Renzo and Sylvia. Uh, I feel you, Sylvia. You know, I feel like that when I get to the temple. I think most of us have that, uh, that just really welling of emotion, that upswell that, uh, you know, it's a lot. You guys are holding that for the whole community of the temple from now until we can next get together. So that's a big job. And I'm so grateful to both of you for doing that. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Very honored. Well, folks, we have come to the end of our multiverse journey. Um, I want to wrap up with just a couple of things to share with you. First of all, you may have noticed that you access this through a website called Kindling, which is a new platform from the Burning Man Project that will host other kinds of events like this, live um, participatory kinds of programs. So keep an eye out there for other events. And especially if you enjoyed uh, this Desert Arts 3 view, I have exciting news that Burning Man Arts is launching a storytelling project this year for artists called Art Speaks. 
So it's based on the program that we do on Playa that's super successful. And, you know, I just had such a good time tonight listening to all these people tell their stories. And there are so many more than that than we had time to fit tonight. And so we're gonna feature some of them through the Kindling platform on Art Speaks. So we'll start that up, I think in late June. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and lastly, I wanted to say a big thank you to lots of people that made this evening possible this afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, I want to thank all of the artists. There were 15 or so artists that were here live um, and all the presenters. I want to thank Gloria and Joe, who did a great job moderating. Um, the lobby hosts sounds like people had a great time and the intermissions um, exist for doing the game show. Dom for um, DJing the gallery. Dave X for doing the storytelling. And a lot of people took some time to make this event happen. So I want to thank all of them, all the volunteers, the art department staff, um, especially Kai Horton, who you saw as a brief moment as our train conductor. She pulled a lot of this magic together. Um, Shannon Kelly as well. And the community events team led by um, Justin Katz, who Paradox, who did a ton of stuff to bring this event together, and Stephen Raspa. And thanks too to our webinar tech masters who did all the magic behind the scenes. Um, but most importantly, I want to thank you. Um, huge, big, sincere thank you for coming today. I know that lots of you are, are artists and creative beings in your own right. Um, so thanks for bringing the inspiration that you bring to the community. And I know you're all doers and movers and shakers. So I just want to invite you to continue to give in the ways that you do. If you would like to learn more about any of the artists you saw tonight or support them, there are links to each one of them in the Kindling app that um, we'll put a link in the chat right now so you can see that. And also for you to know that the work that our team does year round to support these artists is part of the larger mission of Burning Man Project, which is a nonprofit organization. So if you feel moved at all to support us, we appreciate that as well. Um, it will help us continue the work that we do and bring back Black Rock City in all of its glory. So um, we will leave the chat on. We're gonna turn the art gallery back on for about 15 more minutes or something like that. So enjoy as you work your way out of the, the multiverse theater. And um, thank you so much. Take care, be well.